Hey you guys, I have a lot of things to be excited about right now, not the least of which is the fact that a new local coin shop opened up in my town and it's awesome. The name of the store is Bucks County Rare Coin and Precious Metals. I'll include a link to their website in the video description. It's not only the closest coin shop to my house, but it's the best one. I mean, what more could I ask for? The owner of the shop, Michael, he knows what kind of coins make me tick. And he seems to be driven by the same kind of like history that's behind the coins as I am. Now, let's just say I have supported this new local business enough recently that my wife says I need to take a break for a few months. Anyway, I would like to introduce you to a coin that I recently picked up at his shop. It's a mid 1800s Seated Liberty silver dollar. That's special for a few reasons. First off, being a Seated Liberty silver dollar, it's more sought after than Peace dollars or Morgan dollars. There weren't many of them circulated because of a currency crisis that was going on at the time. Oftentimes they sell for hundreds of dollars, even in heavily worn condition. This one's the first one that I've actually held in my hands. There are some issues with it that some people would say make it a problem coin. But those same things are what make me love it and, and made me want to add it to my collection. It has a hole drilled in it and it has the names and birth dates of three children inscribed on the front and the back. After doing some research online, I am almost certain that I found the family that's tied to this coin. What thrills me about adding an old coin to my collection is thinking like, who could have held this coin? Whose pockets did it pass through? Abraham Lincoln, Nikola Tesla, Amelia Earhart. The fact that I can tie this coin to specific people that were born 180 years ago, that is thrilling for me. Let me show you what I found. For whatever reason, I started with the back of the coin. When I typed in Florence C. Heggie into Google, I came up dry. The same with Joss L. Heggie. I tried Josephine and Jocelyn with no luck. If you can think of another name that Joss is an abbreviation for, maybe it's a boy name. I didn't even think about that. In any case, it was when I turned the coin over that the floodgates opened. When I Googled Emma C. Heggie, not only did I get an exact name match, but guess what? She was born in 1866. Adding even more weight to the match was the fact that she lived only 30 some miles from my new favorite coin shop. Per Google, a local newspaper writes, when Emma C. Heggie was born on the 1st of April, 1866, in Philadelphia Monthly Meeting, her father, William Augustus Heggie, was 26, and her mother, Sarah Sitter Levering, was 20. She lived in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and she died on the 10th of April, 1867 the age of one. It was this sad fact, the press release that the Heggie's firstborn had died when she was just one years old, gave me the names of her parents and the next clue in my hunt. Upon inquiry, not only did I find a William A. Heggie that lived in Philadelphia, but he was born in 1839, making him 26 years old when Emma was born, just like the newspaper clipping had stated. At this point, my excitement was at a 10, but it was about to blow sky high. As I continued my research, I discovered that William Augustus Heggie was a second lieutenant in the Union Army. He belonged to the 106th Pennsylvania Volunteer Infantry Company G. That is hard to say. I know enough about the Civil War to know that it carried on from like 1861 to 1865. I've owned a few other coins from this era and have always been excited by the thought that a coin could have passed through the hands of a soldier that fought in the war. This revelation that William Heggie was part of the Union Army gave my search new momentum. Per Google, the 106th out of Pennsylvania was a volunteer infantry regiment which served in the Union Army. It was part of the famous Philadelphia Brigade which helped defend against Pickett's charge in the Battle of... Gettysburg. This is where my excitement goes through the roof. Gettysburg is the largest battlefield in the country. Confederate General Robert E. Lee had great success in defeating the Union Army in the South, and now he was bringing the fight to the northern states. The fighting at Gettysburg lasted just three days, but it was the bloodiest battle of the war, and it culminated in Pickett's Charge. So the previous two days, 
had seen General Lee attacking both flanks of the Union Army. On the third day, ignoring his commander's advice, he gave the order for his entire army to hit the Yankees right in the center. He made this bet that by attacking the flanks up until this point in the battle, he had kind of drawn men from the middle of the Union line, leaving that vulnerable. He lost this bet in what went down as one of the greatest military blunders in history. The North literally was defending the higher ground and was able to repel and drive back the Confederate forces. While Lee's army inflicted losses on the Union soldiers, his men were slaughtered, and those that remained eventually were driven back to Virginia. The failure of Pickett's charge is largely seen as the turning point in the Civil War. So back to William Heggie. Think of what this man lived through. He not only survived fighting in the Civil War, but very likely was a part of its bloodiest battle, defending his home state in that battle that set the course for the North to win the whole thing. At only age 26, almost his entire adult life was spent fighting for his life. His world was finally not being blown to bits. He falls in love, he starts a family, but his firstborn daughter, Emma, dies at only one year. I mean, talk about a tragedy. He had just made it through the war, but he couldn't protect his own baby girl. It's so sad. This overwhelming sorrow retreats just a little bit as he welcomes two more daughters, Florence and Josephine. Now, what transpired between then and the day that I came to hold his love token in my hand? Did he become a granddad? I, I may continue to track down his family and maybe I'll find a living descendant somewhere that would be cool although I would be tempted to like give them the coins I'm not sure if I want to do that maybe I'll continue that search but I've already learned more about this coin than I could have ever imagined before I go I know that someone will ask me about his wife Sarah Sitter Levering in my quest I found a Sarah Levering who was born in 1845 and could have been 20 years old when Emma was born, like the newspaper said. The thing that doesn't match is her middle initial is listed as an L instead of S. The crazy thing though, is her father's name is listed as Joseph Heggy Levering. So if this isn't her, then that is one heck of a coincidence. I mean, a ludicrous coincidence, right? If it is her, what does that mean? Does that mean that she married her cousin? I mean, that's, I don't know. So that's where I left off with her. Thank you for being one of the 30 or so people who will watch this coin video. I make them because it makes me excited and makes me happy. But if you liked what you saw, please smash the like button, comment, subscribe to the channel. You know the drill. I'll see you later.